let's start off with, uh, this is the cortical I.O. project. Um, it is semantic anomaly detection. Uh, Soren and Pablo couldn't be here, but Taylor is here, so we're going to watch their video, and uh, we can get comments and questions to Taylor, and uh, Francisco, is, if he's in the room, maybe might want to join in. Hi, I'm Taylor from Cortical I.O. in Vienna, Austria, and this is our team submission for the Numenta HDM challenge. We wanted to show how to combine the HTM with our Retina API, which works on text data. So we built a tool that analyzes the semantics of Twitter posts made by several US presidential candidates. So the data source is the text content of their tweets, which is publicly available. And then we process this text data and encode it using our Retina API into SDRs that the HTM can understand. And then using the HTM, we detect semantic anomalies or unexpected changes in the text content of the candidate's tweets. So first, some quick background information about what we do at Cortical and how this relates to the HTM. Basically, we provide an API that encodes text into an AmeriCorps representation, and this encoding process is similar to the way information is distributed throughout different areas of the brain. So on the left here, you can see a graphical representation of how we store semantic information in a 128 by 128 matrix with individual bits of the matrix representing a specific meaning and with related pieces of information being stored close to each other uh, just like in the brain. And so we refer to these representations as semantic fingerprints, and they're kind of a sparse distributed representation, or word SDR, as some people call them. And we can compute one of these SDRs for any kind of text in a variety of languages. So once you have one of these semantic fingerprint representations of a piece of text, uh, there are a lot of things you can do with it. And one of the cool things about our SDRs is that they're compatible with the HTM and can be fed directly into the temporal pool. So in a way, our API acts as a text encoder and spatial pooler in one. And once you start creating SDRs for text, you can use them to let the HTM learn patterns in human language, uh, detect anomalies, and also make predictions. So that's what we did with this application. First, we extracted the text from the Twitter feeds of six presidential candidates, uh, shown here in no particular order. And then we grouped the tweets per candidate by day and created a semantic fingerprint for that group of tweets. Then we input those fingerprints into the HTM and graph the anomaly scores that it outputs by day. And because we use semantic fingerprints as input for the HTM, we're not graphing the anomaly scores based on the volume of tweets, but by the actual semantic content of them, so what the candidates are actually talking about. So the higher the anomaly score, the more unexpected the content of the Twitter post was for that day. So when you see peaks in the graph, like uh, here or here, the HTM determined that whatever the candidates posted about on those days was unusual for that candidate. And for reference, we also plotted a few real-world events on the graph uh, as vertical red lines. So you can see how detected anomalies correspond with events uh, like the candidates making official announcements, uh, holding campaign rallies, and taking part in debates. And so the graphs are interactive, and you can move your mouse over data points to see the keywords and uh, exact anomaly scores for those days. And then you can also click on a data point to see the full text of the tweets for that day. And so for most of the candidates, you can see that at the beginning of the graphs, the anomaly scores were initially quite high. This is because the HTM was still learning a pattern of topics that they post about. And then after learning a pattern, the anomaly scores tend to drop off quite a bit, especially you, know, you can see that with uh, Bernie Sanders here. But for example, you can see with uh, Hillary Clinton, the top graph, as soon as she officially announced her candidacy in mid-April, uh, the HTM immediately detected a change in what she was posting about on her Twitter account. And then it quickly adjusted to this new pattern of topics in her feed, uh, with only minor anomalies popping up after that, uh, like this one here that seems to correspond with a, a rally that she held on Labor Day. So as an additional feature, we also added the ability to filter the Twitter feed semantically by social and economic issues. This is done by working on the fingerprint level of the tweets to determine what the candidates are talking about and not just simple keyword matching. So when you click these buttons, it reduces the Twitter feeds to only posts that have a high similarity to these topics. And then we train separate HTMs for each candidate on these feeds so the anomaly scores are based only on the filtered data. So you can see that certain candidates tend to post more about certain issues, and for some candidates it's actually an anomaly when they do talk about certain issues.
And the entire application is available live uh, right now at this URL. I will put the link in the video description. And so we encourage people to take a look at it, uh, draw their own conclusions about the anomalies detected, and hopefully use it as a way to get a clearer picture about how politicians speak in the media. So that's it, uh, semantic anomaly detection with the cortical IO retina API and the HTM. And we at Cortical are big fans of the HTM and we're very much inspired by the work that uh, Numenta does. So if you have any questions about how to integrate our software with uh, the HTM, then please feel free to contact us. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> really great obvious change in Hillary Clinton's post as soon as she announces her candidacy. That's very telling. Well, it looked to me like she talked about lots of different topics. Yeah, all yeah, over my the map. You know, and then all of a sudden it's all no, about it's, her campaign it's and it's right. like, ah, this is getting old. <laughs> no, she hired a campaign manager yeah, that's what to, I was to do her say. tweets. Right? I think that that's what happened. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, that's a great anomaly detection though. She had, somebody else started writing her tweets for her. It becomes obvious. Yeah. So, so I hope I, you don't mind me just jumping in here. Um, the, um, What's not, what's not clear to me is how much the, the temple memory is actually adding here versus just using the fingerprints. Because you know, if a candidate is very consistent every day, they, they put out the same basic topics, or, and then there really wouldn't be any pattern there. It would be kind of flatlining. It's just you know, the same, same, same. And then you would be able to detect a, a change, and the, and the HTM temple memory would see that. But you might get the same result just by using your document fingerprints, uh, uh, making a document fingerprint for every day. Um, I'm just curious, the, is, my, is that my understanding correct, or did I miss something, or did you test that, or uh, things like that? Yeah, I, I think that's uh, true. Um, we could try to just pick out what topics are happening when and then see, okay, is this a new topic that hadn't happened before? But I think, um, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, by having the anomaly score, then you really see exactly you know, what, how, how predictable was this, how different was this from But you might have gotten the same result by just doing an overlap comparison between the document fingerprint from the day before and today, maybe, would that might have happened? That's only a, a one-day history, though. I know, but I'm, yeah. not, I'm, I'm questioning, is there a temple pattern Why day, to day? <laughs> Like, Mondays are, Mondays is poverty, and Tuesdays is terrorism, oh. and Wednesdays Yeah, there, is, there isn't a sequence like that, for, for sure. Uh, because you, you, if you're going to be doing a sequence of day-to-day -day sort of compilations, you, you're going to need to see a flow or change day-to-day. Right. Um, and, you know, and there might be some, like, as current events occur or we approach an election, or I don't know what it is. Uh, I just, it, it wasn't clear to me that the temple memory is going to add a lot over just doing a distance overlap score. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it might, I don't know, but I didn't. But I, I think it actually, it actually contributes a lot because the, the, if you would do that in a static fashion, uh, the whole detection of something new uh, would be directly dependent on what the person is talking about overall. Yeah. And because the only way of doing this without the temporal memory would basically be to spot for specific uh, features or pixels in the fingerprint to appear. Uh, but it would not tell you uh, if uh, for those pixels to appear at this very moment in time, uh, this would be something new. So you would well, get I could just compare it to yesterday's. I mean, and say, was yesterday's document fingerprint different than today's document? But, but, but I think that the, that the transitions of the topics that are coming up, uh, that's what uh, is actually the interesting uh, part. I, did, I know, I yeah. just didn't know if, and, it really, if it's really true. I mean, is there really a pattern there? I, I, and, it, and it stays, so to say, the, the uh, possibility for anomalies stays sparse yeah. as it is in the beginning if you use the, the temporal memory. Yeah. If we would just do that passively and we sort of keep tracking over a month or something, uh, nothing would be uh, uh, new. So to say anymore. Yeah. Well, you could do a day to day at comparison. Anyway, it would be something you could test to see how well it works. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. I'm curious, did you try with the anomaly likelihood and not the anomaly scores? Did, did you try to see what you would get by using Yeah, actually, we, we did try that, but I think that needs some kind of uh, parameters from the encoders. That's what uh, I was told. Oh, okay, I didn't actually try it's it out. Value. Oh, okay. But it does need a value, and in their case, they don't have a value to send it, they just have an SDR. So it's and a little should, more difficult. Should, yeah. should be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, something, something we can try out then. Question, uh, how does your um, representation and the, the method differ from uh, a standard method like bag of words topic modeling using LDA? I think this is yeah, it's, it's basically, uh, it's somehow smarter in figuring out uh, how they are related. Uh, so if you just take the bag of words, the only thing you can do is to match the keywords. 
And uh, if someone expresses a certain concept by using other keywords, there is no way of directly figuring out that this is actually similar. And uh, by using uh, the, the arrangement in the fingerprint, uh, even if, uh, so to say, two features are next to each other, by knowing that the environment of the feature is important, uh, the, so to say, the cosine that you get uh, uh, on the similarity of the two vectors still stays very similar. So, so is that like saying that your, your encoding is a language model in itself? With some yeah, language? yeah, yeah. So it's a, it, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a language model. Uh, I, I would call it it's a semantic model, even, uh, because there are certain aspects of, of language that we don't consider, uh, as, for example, the actual, the actual uh, uh, sequence of, of the words. Uh, but as, as far as the aboutness of the whole thing is concerned, uh, that's what is basically modeled. Uh, oh, it's, re oh, sorry. it's a really cool application. Um, and uh, it looks like it works pretty well. Uh, and uh, <laughs> got my imagination spinning. I thought, well, can you take it yeah, a step so further and uh, create a Twitter generator? I mean, this, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that's actually only the beginning. I mean, uh, one problem is that uh, the actual tweets, uh, uh, they don't have a lot of semantics uh, compared to some real text. If you take, for example, news med real news articles or, or things like that, uh, you have much more uh, semantic payload in this. Uh, so it, with the tweet, tweets, it's basically the problem to uh, uh, actually find some, something uh, meaningful, if you want. Yeah? Right. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, an improvement would be uh, to actually train the system purely on tweets, uh, which would then allow you to also take in consideration all the smileys and all these shortcuts that they use. Uh, and uh, as I said already in a couple of uh, conversations, I could I could imagine that by taking all the smileys into account, you get a better sentiment analysis uh, on the tweets uh, than we see in current systems uh, who try to do this by, by dictionary, basically. So I have two questions. One is, um, I know from personal experience that tuning the temporal memory to work with uh, fingerprints is a little bit tricky. So you know, how much experimentation did you do, and did you really get a sense of whether it's working well or not working well yet? Uh, well, that part was done by some of my colleagues, but uh, they did a very similar hack at the last hackathon, uh, the breaking news demo, and we started basically with the parameters that we had for that. So we didn't do a whole lot of tuning this time around because I guess uh, the last time they already did a lot of that. Okay. My second question is, who's going to win the Republican nomination? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the hot question, basically. It's a prediction, okay. Yeah. Not an anomaly. Yeah. It, it might be anomalous. Uh, for the <laughs> they're all they're all pretty anomalous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you uh, uh, so the uh, uh, Grok for stocks uh, application looks at sequences of tweets and looks for anomalies. I mean, would, if you took the stock tweet database and fed it into your model, would it essentially reproduce kind of what Grok for stocks did, or would it be different? Yeah. Well, if you, uh, if you classify no them semantics. by like cash tag, okay, I mean, that's the question. Had, uh, to compare those two ways of looking, yeah. Yeah, they're complementary, really. Yeah. I think you'd want to so add. So the cool yeah. thing would be to, to use both of them yeah. simultaneously, yeah. yeah. Which I think uh, should be feasible. Yeah. That'll be good. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay. Thank you, guys. Good. Good job. <laughs> <laughs>